Hi, Aaron Estrada here. This week we're going to talk about the basic types of image and pixel manipulation that's available to you in Nuke. The basis of compositing in any package is stacking all the available tools to create the desired result. In Nuke, that means nodes. So let's look at some of the basic color manipulation nodes. In Nuke, they live under this menu here. These are all of the color manipulation nodes. I drop down a few of the basics to start with. We have add, multiply, gamma, one called color lookup, and grade. And let's go through these one by one and look at what they do to the image. And we'll also look at this waveform plot here that's wired up to simultaneously display the result of each manipulation. So add, as you might guess, essentially just adds a value to all the pixels uniformly. As you can see, it just lifts all of the values up. All the values at the high end push up above one. You can see here. And all of the values down in the blacks or starting at zero get lifted by the amount that you add. Now, something that may not be entirely obvious about the add node is that you can also use it to subtract which might be of limited value, except for a case where you might want to undo something that you added in later down the line. Multiply multiplies every pixel by a fixed value. So let's view that, and we'll view it here. So it'll have the effect of making the image get brighter by just linearly multiplying the whole image up. And of course, multiplying it by a smaller value brings all the values down. So you can use this as a brightness slider or a brightness knob to multiply an image brighter or darker. Now, these types of operations work much better in a linear light space than they did in an output referred space like a gamma corrected space that you might see in older systems. Because when we turn this slider up, it's essentially like increasing the amount of light that is being sent to the screen without any gamma already in it. That's applied after this manipulation is done. Speaking of gamma, we already looked at the gamma operation in a previous session. Let's look at it again here. So the gamma operation brings the midtone values up or down but does not touch black or white. Now one caveat that needs to be mentioned when manipulating values that have floating point ranges above one is that gamma has a sort of unexpected behavior. And that is, if you can imagine the this curve here continuing up off this way, interpolating out, continuing along this tangent, all of the values over one will actually get brighter as the gamma goes down. So this can have a slightly unintuitive effect when you're essentially darkening an image or what appears to be darkening the bulk of an image, but anything that's over one will actually seem to explode up in value. And we can prove that here by putting a pixel probe on Marcy's hair here. So I'll find a really bright spot of Marcy's hair and I'm putting a pixel probe here. Let's watch these values in Marcy's hair as I adjust the gamma. So I'm going to adjust the gamma up, which will make the whole image seem to get brighter. And watch what happens to Marcy's hair, the brightest super white values in her hair. They're going down, right? Which oh, happens when I make the bulk of the image go down the values in her hair are completely exploding. So this is something you should definitely be cautious of when using gamma on images that have high dynamic ranges in them because uh, this is the appropriate behavior, but if you didn't expect it, you could have some uh, big surprises when you tried to use that image down the line and you find that your super luminous values have just gone nuclear on you. Color lookup is a pretty 
versatile and cool type of color manipulation. Essentially, it has an input value and an output value here. So if you think of the uh, essentially the value that comes in comes along on this line and as it finds its value, so this starts at zero and goes to one and it actually goes much further than one but we're only looking at it between zero and one now. Let's say 0.5 which is right here in the middle of the graph. The value 0.5 goes up and looks at the curve to see what value should it become. Now in this case 0.5, the curve hasn't been touched, it's a linear curve. 0.5 finds 0.5, so input is 0.5 and output is 0.5. So let's add a little bit of uh, interest into this. We'll add a another curve, another knot to this curve. So I did that by clicking Control and Alt on the curve. And I'm just going to start dragging the curve around. Now you can see I'm telling 0.5 to become 0.7. It's using this curve, this lookup table, which is infinitely more adjustable for me to, to do my adjustments. Now, some of you might be familiar with the curves tool in Photoshop and other programs, but you may not have ever thought about how it works. So it's, it's kind of useful to know how it works because then you can get a little bit more benefit from it. Knowing that these values can go further beyond one is useful too. Let's say you had a highlight value up here a really bright value that you wanted to, like in Marcy's hair, that you wanted to round out and sort of soft clip her hair so it never gets above one. You could put something up here in the bright area where her hair is going and use that to gently soft clip it off so that these values in her hair never go super luminous. So that's how a lookup curve works. There's several other types of color manipulations, and uh, we don't really have time to go into all of them. We'll be exploring them as we do assignments and projects through the term. So rather than go into all of these right now, we're going to jump ahead to one of the more useful Uber nodes, which is the grade node. So the grade node has a lot of those things that we just looked at all stacked up inside it. So it has the ability to move the black point, white point, lift, gain, which is the same as multiply, a duplicate of multiply, so you have two controls here, offset, and also gamma. These all operate from top to bottom. So the order of operations is almost as if you had all of these nodes stacked up one above the other, one after the other. So black point, white point first, then lift, gamma gain, and so on in this order of operation moving down. So let's look at the visual result of that and what it does to the curve. I'm going to move the black point down, which will have the effect of actually moving it up in making, making black seem to move up. I'm telling it that negative 0.17 is the new black. So if I go the other way, this will have the effect of pushing the black level deep, deeper into the image and saying black is at a higher level. Now you'll notice that right now, Nuke seems to be clipping off black. It's just chopping off everything at the bottom. That is because in the grade node, clamp black has been checked off. And this is the default. But watch what happens when I turn it off. Nuke has now allowed me to generate negative values by moving my black point up. So this is a caveat, again, that you should look out for when dealing with floating point images. These types of negative values, they can't be displayed directly to the screen because what looks blacker than black, but Nuke will happily continue to store these values for you. Let's look at the pixel probe again. I'm going to probe over a dark part of the image here and you can see Nuke is happily keeping the negative values in memory for us. This is considered a feature because there's times when this is a perfectly valid thing that you might want to do. You might want to keep those negative values around for a little while and recover them later. 
or you could make a mistake and really hose yourself. So keep an eye out for this. I think by default, leaving black clamp on is probably a good idea and being more careful about what you do. If you realize you've created a really crunchy image like this, you should probably be careful about how you're treating your blacks. By moving the white point, we can essentially multiply the whole image. And this is redefining what white is rather than multiplying it by a fixed image. But it's very useful, and I'll show you some workflows you can actually use this control in. Lift is the same as uh, adding. Hmm, it's not quite the same as adding. It's only lifting the black values up, but leaving white in the same place. So that can be handy if you need to adjust your black levels without touching the white at all, white point or moving white. Gain is a multiply, just like we've seen in multiply. So it multiplies the whole image. And something worth mentioning is that all of these can do these actions on a color as well. So you can pick a color or you can use color sliders to adjust. So let's say that I wanted to multiply this whole image with a little bit of blue to make it look cooler. I could do that or make it look matrixy by multiplying it by some green. So these are not just fixed to doing everything uniformly. You can do things channel by channel. By control clicking this control, it will bring it all back to one slider as well. Multiply is a duplicate of gain, and these are useful in conjunction with each other. I'll show you some workflows where these two duplicate controls are actually useful to use together. Offset is the same as add. It adds a uniform value to the entire image or subtracts a value. Now you notice again, I'm clipping off my blacks. That could be problematic depending on what you're trying to do. And gamma, we've already seen gamma. Just keep in mind that these all act in order from top to bottom. So if I was to touch the offset here, you'll notice that it pushes everything down before the gamma is applied. And gamma can't really function on sub black levels, so it's breaking it right here. If I left black clamp on, it wouldn't be so disastrous. It would just bottom out right there. So that's the grade node. Let's look at a really useful example of what you can do in the grade node in the next segment.